What's going on guys? If you're having issues when you have a trailer connected to your vehicle and you're having issues with the running lights, fuse blowing, which would knock out, you know, just tail lights and running lights, even though your brake lights and turn signals are working fine. Um, first, you need to check for the fuse itself. And if you replace that fuse and it blows again, then obviously it means it's not the fuse problem. So we need to do some investigating on why exactly you're having issues either with your trailer lights not working or the fuse has blown in the vehicle. Now, of course, you need to investigate the trailer wiring. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this step by step as far as how to do it, but these are just general things that you need to look for to determine what the problem is. So you need to look at your trailer wiring as far as the car's portion of it. Make sure there's no obvious you know, problems with your wires. You might have to trace the wiring all through the bumper, especially if it's an aftermarket setup. Uh, most of these, you know, they run the wires through the bumper and then up into the brake light assembly. So you have to remove that and look for any connections that, are, you know, if, if you had a hitch company install the lights for you or install the wiring for you, or even if it's a factory setup, we need to trace the wiring and make sure there's nothing obvious as far as broken wires, worn wires, or even pinched or crimped wires that are, uh, you know, getting a poor connection. All right, now if all that checks out, then we go through the trailer wiring itself. And depending on how old your trailer is, and that may not even be an issue as far as age is concerned, because I have a, this is a 2020 enclosed trailer with very low use on it. Only been used about five times. But what I found out is there was a pinched wire inside the trailer. And I'll step in there and show you basically what I had to look for. Um, now I can't tell you exactly which wire because I went ahead and ended up replacing the entire wiring harness for the trailer. And that's not all that difficult to do. You know, you can go to a Northern Tool or shop online and get the wiring harness, you know, for your setup and just start from scratch and install the whole thing. It's really not that big a deal. You know, it usually goes up under goes under on both sides of the trailer as you see right there goes up and into it so it's not an impossible job at all so now the only issue is with a lot of these trailers they have walls on them and the walls are usually fastened to these beams that come all the way through it, you know, every 18, 24 inches or so. So you're going to have to, if you're, you know, if your wiring is not accessible up top, which mine now is, you're going to have to unscrew these panels and remove the boards or at least pull them back somewhat. Some of them are also secured by construction adhesive. So it really depends on, you know, your situation. But you're going to have to get into the trailer and check all of your wiring that I've now put in, you know, flex loom, which I highly recommend you do. Uh, what I think was the problem was there was a pinched wire where the paneling here is screwed to the inner wall of the trailer. So one of these wires was completely pinched and uh, could not get a good connection. So, uh, I went ahead and just pulled it all out and replaced it all because I'm not trying to have that problem again. You know, or, or have to troubleshoot further. Um, also, you need to check any lights on the trailer itself. Make sure that no, no bulbs are burst or broken. You know, and this one has LEDs obviously down here. But up here has standard incandescent bulbs and if your bulb is burst or corroded or just nasty that can cause a problem that will cause a short and blow the fuse in your car so you need to investigate each light on the trailer even if you have side lights like this one now this has LED side lights but if yours has regular light bulbs on the sides or over the fenders down there 
you're going to have to remove those bulbs and take a look in there and see if the sockets themselves have a problem. So, I mean, some of it takes a little bit of time, but it can be done. I spent much of yesterday resolving all this on this trailer, and now it obviously works great. I even installed a nice little interior light that it didn't have before. I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Not a difficult job at all. So I know I can't show you specifically how to solve your problem, but um, some of it with the older trailers, it might be a good idea just to replace all the light sockets, especially if they look bad. Just go ahead and replace the light sockets and replace the wiring because it's really not that hard to do. You know, it comes down through here and then behind this corner right here, it runs straight down and out the side of the trailer. See, it runs out right here. So if you have a, you know, like a, a long coat hanger or a fishing device, like for, uh, you know, like what electricians use, you can feed the wiring up into the side of the trailer and then grab a hold of it from inside the trailer and just pull up brand new wiring all the way through and just run it, you know, run it to, to all your lights. Most, uh, most of these wiring harnesses come with instructions, so it's really not a bad, bad ordeal. Uh, you also need to check grounds. Notice that white wire there, that is the main ground for the trailer's harness. Okay, so you gotta check that. And then each light will also have a ground that needs to be confirmed. So when you take like this one here, you know, you pop this bezel off and unscrew this socket right here. It's usually, uh, you know, there's one thicker wire that will be grounded to the frame or body of the trailer. You need to confirm that those are secure. And if you really can't find anything obvious and you're still having problems, you know, unfortunately, you're just going to have to rewire the trailer. And it'll take you, you know, maybe a half of an afternoon to do it. And I actually made mine better than it was uh, from the factory. You know, get you some of this flex loom here to protect it. You'll need some electrical tape. You'll need various uh, connectors and things. You might need some heat shrink material. You'll need a heat gun if you want to do this properly. So you can actually make your trailer better than before. And, uh, you know, setting one up is not as difficult as one might think. So anyway. Or if you're really opposed to doing it yourself, you just have to take it to a trailer hitch place or a trailer sales place and just, you know, have them do it. So anyway, that's it. Check out other videos. We got all kinds of stuff, you know, where you tow this trailer with the 2008 Ford Taurus X. And we have tons of videos about this vehicle and other cars, motorcycles, dirt bikes, ATVs, you know, how to fix stuff. So check out our channel. We've got all kinds of cool things. And we have a eBay store and Amazon store. So Google Horsepower House and uh, mostly relating to motorcycle tools and uh, specialty stuff for power sport vehicles so check that out on our online stores biker dave signing off on a beautiful sunday in atlanta ga y'all have a great day